Hello and welcome to Iridium Rock and Metal Reviews. Today I'm going to do ranking the songs or the best tracks from 1989. So we're going through these years quite quickly. This is the first year you're starting to see some of the grunge or so-called grunge bands come in. You know, um, Nirvana, I noticed as I was going through the list, they're starting their first album or an EP, I think it might have been, but they're starting to, you know, come on the scene, um, Faith No More, so you're starting to see that alternative grunge type, you know, music come onto the scene for the first time, but, you know, we still got some great songs in 1989, great albums, so I've actually got, I think it's 18 songs altogether, which is good, it's, it's quite a lot to talk about, so I'm going to get straight on with it, um, and we're going to go from 18 to 1 as usual. So, a lot of variation as well, which is cool, which is really good. So, number 18, Gary Moore. So, this is Speak For Yourself off the After The War album. So, it's a bit strange because um, I started to listen to Gary Moore now very real recently. I mean, he hasn't been included in hardly any of my like, top tracks or top albums. But I thought I was you know, get hold of the music and start listening to more because I think I didn't really give him a good chance, especially like back in the 80s. Like I like the singles that he bought out, but didn't really get into the um, the albums as such. What a great riff, Speak For Yourself, off, after the war. What a brilliant bit of guitar work. So underrated, Gary Moore, you know. I think he got sort of put... At the time, obviously, put, people knew he was a good guitarist, but I think sometimes we forget how good he was and... The guitar in this, you know, the, the guitar solo is one of the best I've ever heard. Honestly, if you've not really got into Gary Moore, some of his stuff, the thing, the problem with Gary Moore was, and I, when I've been listening to these albums, is he's very hit and miss. You know, there's a lot of songs I don't like, but there's some real good songs in between that as well. So you don't get consistency. And that might have been the fact that why well, I didn't really get into Gary Moore big time when I was younger. But that was my number 18. My number 17, a band that haven't appeared on any of my lists, but they may have appeared if I'd gone earlier on my ranking the years. I didn't do that because of, I think I started at 1978 or 79 because that is when I really started to listen to rock music. So before that and go back, you know, it would have been very scarce for me and and, um, and it, you wouldn't see hardly any band. So it's Queen, the classic Queen, of course, and I want it all off the Miracle album. So what I loved about this song was, I'm a big fan of Queen in the 70s. You know, I thought they were a great band, so ahead of their time, doing something completely different. But I wasn't a big fan of their later stuff. But I think I want it all. You know, it was just such a relief to hear them do something a bit heavier. Um, and it was one of the heaviest songs they've ever actually done. Um, and I think they deserve some recognition. Freddie Mercury... You know what I mean? He's got to be up there with one of the best vocalists of all time. You know, what an amazing talent. So I want it all as my number 17. My number 16, Kingdom Come. Who do you love off the In Your Face album? So the Kingdom Come debut album for me was one of the best debuts. You know, I know I've, I always say that. I've probably got a list of about 50 or 60 or maybe 100 best debuts of all time. But that really was a classic and i listened to it it sounds as fresh as it you know as when i heard it um the first kingdom come album i was a bit disappointed in your face i don't know why it's actually seen by many fans as their best album or very close to the to the debut i could sort of see that you know there's some really good tracks on here um but it wasn't as consistent for me as the debut album i think they tried to veer away from what they was all about because of the stick they was getting about, you know, you sound like Led Zeppelin, and I think you can hear them trying to get away from that on this second album. But, you know, you should just you should just write what you love. You, you know, you should just do what you want to do, and um, all will come good. But it's still a really good album. Who Do You Love is my favourite track off you. My number 15, Wasp, and Forever Free from the Headless Children. So I think that, you know, Wasp are obviously known for their heaviness. Um, 
and, and that's cool. I, I really like some nearly a lot of their songs. But when they slow it down, they really write a good ballad. They really do. I remember, I think it was Cries in the Night off The Last Command. Um, they always do a real epic-y standing ballad, you know, and, and it's still heavy at the same time, but it's great. Um, Forever Free, I remember it when I was a kid. For me, you know, a lot of people will probably think a lot of other tracks off this album, but I'm a sucker for a ballad. Can't help it. And I think Wasp do them perfectly. So that's my number 15. My number 14, White Snake. Now you're gone. So this wasn't my best, my favourite White Snake album by far. You know, I, I did prefer um, before the 1987 album, actually. I preferred those few albums, you know, Slide It In, Come and Get It, that, around, that, around that period, definitely. But I love this song. You know, it's quite heavy. It's really catchy, really catchy. It's got Steve Vai was the guitarist at this point. You know, I thought he was great. Hard to take over from, you know, John Sykes was an amazing guitarist, wasn't he? You know, probably my favourite guitarist for White Snake. But this was a great song, really catchy. Absolutely love it. Great vocals by Coverdale, although I preferred him earlier on in his career. Still a great performance all round from the guys. Number 13, Black Sabbath, Headless Cross from the Headless Cross album. So I think Tony Martin got, has had a, you know, so underrated. He's recently appeared on um, Magnus Coulson's Free Fall album. Just listen to those couple of songs on there. Outstanding performance. This guy, especially on that Magnus Coulson album, have a little listen and you really hear some D.O. in his voice. You know, I know I can't help comparing. I always do, but that's the way it is. You know, you've got to, give you an idea of what i'm thinking but headless cross was a really good track quite a quite a big hit i believe for the band at the time it was all across um mtv ed bangers ball and all that and um a great vocalist absolutely great vocalist and obviously that riffing from tony iomi what you can't go wrong can you so my number 12 motley crew dr feel good so my favourite album from the crew was Shatter the Devil. I like Fear of Pain. I really like Girls, Girls, Girls. And this was, you know, it was right up there. Production was absolutely brilliant. I didn't know what song to really put on here. I thought Dr. Feelgood really summed up the album in general. Um, great performance from the guys. And it was like they was real energy in this record as well. Obviously, the production helped but it felt like they were hungry again for some, you know, it's just some records have that energy, don't they? But that's a really good, really good song. All right, my number 11. So my first sort of introduction to an alternative band, I suppose, and it's Faith No More. And I chose The Real Thing off of The Real Thing album. So I love this album. I think this is great. And this is another one. I mean, they, they replaced the vocalist with Mike Patton, I love his voice. I think he's great. I don't like the stuff he does with his extreme vocals. I must admit, there's a band, I saw him at Download a couple of years ago, and they are, no, I just don't get on with that extreme stuff, that shouting. But when he sings, he, this guy can really sing as well. Um, the Real Thing was a bit of an epic song, you know. It was, I think it was about six or seven minutes long, in and out of slow bits, heavy stuff. Amazing vocalist, amazing song. My number 10, White Lion, Little Fighter. This is off the Big Game album, which the Big Game album for me was a bit of a disappointment after the debut album. Well, it weren't the debut album, actually. It was the second album, which was Pride, I believe. And this was the next album, Big Game. I think it's the third album. Yeah, for me, it was a bit of a slip up. It didn't seem as heavy. The production was a bit poor for me. Um, I don't know. that. Even though the, the Pride album... Had, had a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a blurry sort of production. It sort of suited the band in a way. And this was a lot, sort of a lot clearer, but at the same time, it didn't suit the style of music for me. And But Little Fighter was a great, great song. Really catchy. Um, Mike Tramp, obviously a bit of a pretty boy at the time. Um, wasn't the best vocalist. He had definitely had the look, that's <laughs> without a doubt. Uh, good guitarist, Vito Bratter, I think, on this, but... They were a really good band, one of my favourite bands, but they had better to come as well for me. So the next album was a really good album. We'll talk about that later on in my lists. Number nine, one of the most consistent bands in AOR, Melodic Rock, FM. 
and can you hear me calling off tough it out so yeah it's pretty difficult choosing a song off of here um i definitely prefer their aor side the more melodic rock side to their bluesy side and you're starting to see the bluesy side come into this album more than the indiscreet album so i think can you hear me calling though is a definite aor track and i think that's why i like it so much um really catchy stuff real class acts fm real class my number eight skid row 18 and life off the skid row album self-titled album so these really burst onto the scene you know that they, they, they were they were great probably it's a shame with skid row in it because that late 80s if they probably if they had come in at the early 80s they would have been huge all the way through it i would have thought um vocalist outstanding sebastian back or sebastian bark can reach some heights that no other singer can or did you know back in the day i found it hard yet again to choose a song i do like it when they slow it down skid row although on their next album which is my favorite album slave to the grind when they do the heaviness they do it whoa oh my god you know what i mean that was a just a punch in your fucking face that and it's that uh slave to the grind album but 18 of life is a real you know a real classic sounding song brilliant vocals um and it was all the way through this album that's my number eight number seven lizzie Borden, be one of us this was a great song great song off the master of disguise album so this album for me there was a drop you know from um visualize visualize is my favorite lizzie borden album in fact it's one of my favorite albums ever so even though this album is really good production wise there's some really good songs on it i felt there was more filler songs than there was on visualize visualize was just from front to back solid all the way through this one had some real outstanding songs between a few fillers for me be one of us listening to the lyrics it seems that they took a little inspiration from the lost boys um film it's about vampires there's some real you know um definite not quotes but bits taken out of that film into these lyrics without a doubt um but that's a great track that would have fitted on master of this guy um visualize perfectly brilliant song um lizzie borden in great form as well and it was the looking at some detail about the album it was his most successful album definitely at the time it was a huge album for him i think off the back of visual lies you know people were a bit excited and got that and but he really experimented though which was cool you know a lot of bands like stick for being experimental but um, it was a good album number six a bit of a super group and that's bad english and their debut album called bad english and the restless one you know what this is this is a great song on an album full of great songs you know this is another front to back album that a lot i can listen to every song it, it sounds really fresh great slow songs on here but this rest the rest of this one had a real i don't know a big sound to it like it, it you know it could have been a huge huge hit um john wait on the vocals he wasn't my favorite vocalist i didn't like his solo stuff as much but with this band i think he hit gold especially this album neil sean on the guitar of journey amazing musicians on that i love that song real aor melodic rock brilliant my number five this is cool actually because someone suggested this band to me i did a reaction never heard them before loved it then got hold of this album I love the album XYZ and Maggie off of the XYZ album, debut album. Another band came late into the 80s, could have been huge probably earlier on. But what a great, great track. It's the opening track. Absolutely love it. Brilliant musicianship all round. The vocalist, I love it. Different sound, definitely a lot of character to his voice, which I love. Maggie's my number five love that because it wouldn't have appeared in my list if i did the list paper a couple of months ago but now it does so that's great number four shout faith hope and love of the in your face album so this i've mentioned shout before christian metal band um really catchy songs in the same vein as you know striper and joshua around that time 
What a great, great song. So catchy, this. This is um, up there with any other band that was bringing out catchy stuff at the time, full up with, with songs that could have been hits. And Faith, Hope, Love is just one of them songs that I had to choose where I could have chose 10 or 11 of them, you know? Fantastic song. Brilliant vocals, brilliant melodies. Number three. Sorry, yeah, it is number three. Sorry, getting confused. Got a lot on the list here. So, Sabotage of Rage and War of Gutter Ballet. Absolutely love this song. This is another band that I've sort of been, which I liked. I liked this album when it came out back in the late 80s, but never fully got into it and appreciated it as much as I do now. Um, I nearly put a gutter ballet on this list, but of Rage and War, it's so menacing. That undeniable voice, you know, of John Oliver and that shriek he does. And you know what? They 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 wrote some brilliant riffs and songs back then. Another band, underrated, never fully appreciated what they are. The fans absolutely love them, but they just didn't catch on, you know, as they should have done, as shouldn't have been, they should have been massive, but um, great, great song. Being interesting now, my number two. So my number two, TNT, Tonight I'm Falling off Intuition. Brilliant album. You could say the album's a little bit too polished at times. You know, it's definite, it was looked at as a classic um, and I, I totally agree with that. Um, I actually preferred the album before a little bit more Tell No Tales, but this was you know, I was hooked on this. I was actually hooked on this when I was when I was a kid. Well, I was actually 19, so I wasn't really a kid, but you know, um, Tony Harnell, what a voice! And I, I love the heights he hits in this song. I just like, oh my god, I, you wouldn't, you don't even know how he would do it. You know, how can you sing like that? One of the best guitar solos I've ever heard on this. Uh, Ronnie Latecro, is it, I think? Um, the guitar solo is so well thought out on this. It, you know, if you... if you, I don't know if you know, or you, any of you guys haven't heard this song. You probably have. If you listen to this channel, you probably know TNT. But listen to this song and listen to that guitar solo. I love the way it takes little gaps in the guitar solo and the melody comes back in. Absolutely classic really catchy song one of the best singles i've ever heard you know my number one now found it really hard as i do sometimes to choose a song off an album that's an absolute classic that's tesla so obviously the album is great radio controversy oh my god trying to choose a song off of here i was thinking do i go heavy do i go slow i had to choose the classic love song because it's one of my favorite ballads ever written such a sort of sad at the same time but you know uplifting as well at the, at the end of this song i love the way um i love the way that the vocalist comes in at the beginning with the, oh it's just the verses are the best thing about this for me. The, the, way, the way it comes in at the beginning. And like I said, such an uplifting song as well. An absolutely great classic ballad. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic song off a fantastic band. I did prefer Mechanical Resonance, but the first three Tezza albums are just classics you know they are absolute classics and they're bringing out good stuff now as well so that's my list of 1989 i hope you liked it i hope it didn't go on a bit too much i do sometimes but i get a bit excited talking about bands i love so if you've got any that you think i've missed any you want me to listen to that you think i might not know i could do a reaction of course i've got my reaction list is building up big time and trying to keep everyone happy um it ain't easy, but um, I will get round to doing a lot of them. Um, but please, yeah, let me know what your top 10 are. Let me know what your top three are, your top 20 or whatever. That would be really cool. Um, and I'll see you next time. Please subscribe if you haven't. Bottom red, bottom button, uh, bottom, oh my God. Bottom of the screen, <laughs> red button. Thank you very much.